Say, Matt, where's Red O'Hara, your star lubrication man? Well, I tacked, didn't you hear? Red's been promoted. He's out right now on a road testing job. Promoted, eh? That's great. Who's going to take Red's place? Well, that new fellow there, Tech. His name's Tony Adams. Why don't you stick around? Over here, Tony. This the can of oil you wanted, Mac? Yeah, Tony, that's it. Now, meet Tech here. He's going to sit in on our engine oil story. Howdy, Tech. Mac's going to give me the lowdown and picking the right oil for customers' cars. Glad to hear it, my boy. Mac's the boy who can do it. He knows all about oil. Oh, I may not know all the answers, but I've been interested in oil and oil refining for quite a while. You know, there's a lot that happens before we get what we call a good lubricating oil. For instance, when petroleum is pumped out of the ground, it contains materials like wax or asphalt, tar, gasoline, naphtha, and kerosene that are not desirable engine lubricants. It's not the sweetest smelling liquid, either. That's what's meant by petroleum? All that? Yep. The word petroleum itself means rock oil. Petro means rock. Oleum means oil. And all that mineral matter, salt water sometimes, gases and chemicals have to be removed. The water usually is separated first. Then the refiner distills off the more volatile gases, the gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, and various grades of fuel and diesel oil. After that, there's a solvent extraction process which removes more undesirable products. The oil is then redistilled. Finally, there's a blending of light and heavy oils to produce lubricating oil of a certain viscosity. Tell Tony how that viscosity is determined, Mac. Good idea. You see, Tony, viscosity is a measure of oil thickness or body. Molasses, for example, is thick. It has a high viscosity. It flows slowly. Kerosene is thin. It has low viscosity and flows freely. A device known as a viscosimeter is used to measure oil viscosity. It's simply a tank containing a temperature-controlled liquid. In the center of the tank is a vessel that can hold a certain amount of oil. At the lower end of the vessel is a standard-sized orifice through which the oil flows while the viscosity test is being made. Now, the length of time in seconds that it takes 60 cubic centimeters of oil at a certain temperature to flow through that orifice determines the viscosity. A 60 cc's is about two fluid ounces. So that's how it's done. Yeah, but remember that viscosity only means how the oil flows at certain temperatures. It's not an indication of durability, strength, or toughness. Good point, Heck. We'll talk about how oil is designed to hold up under certain driving conditions in a moment. Right now, let's explain the SAE viscosity numbers. That SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers, doesn't it? Right. The SAE Lubricants Committee is a group of oil experts who set up viscosity classifications for lubricating oil. See this SAE 30 on this can top? That's an oil of high viscosity. The higher the number, the higher the viscosity. SAE 20 would be lower viscosity, a lighter oil. Yeah, and if the letter W follows the SAE number, that means it's a winter oil, one that ensures easier starting in cold weather. Okay, Tech. That's easy to keep in mind. But uh, how come some oil cans are marked with two SAE numbers? Well, that means that the oil in that can falls within the viscosity seconds range of two SAE grades. You see, the SAE Lubricants Committee has set a minimum and a maximum for each viscosity range of crankcase oils. Now. When an oil meets the maximum and minimum standards for two different viscosity ranges, both SAE numbers will appear on the can. So, if an oil is marked SAE 20 and 20W, that means the oil permits fast cranking at low temperatures and yet gives good economy at high temperatures. Yeah, Tony. It means that the oil has a wide enough range to qualify in two ways. First, as a satisfactory winter-grade oil, second, as a satisfactory oil for warmer temperatures. I get it now. Fine. Now you know what the SAE numbers mean, so you can refer to the owner's operating manual to pick the right oil to use for certain temperatures. But there's more to selecting the oil that's best for other conditions. You tell him, Mac. Okay. 
Keep in mind, Tony, that under various driving conditions, oil becomes contaminated. Dirt and carbon particles and some of the water and acid are removed by the oil filter. Crankcase ventilation removes most of the water and acid. To protect the engine, then, and to help make the oil last longer, certain chemicals are added to the oils. They retard the formation of acids, spread protective coatings, and so on. You mean they're doing that to all oils? No, not all oils. You can get a straight mineral oil without any additives. Then, there's an oil that has only some additives. And third, there's an oil that's got the whole works in the way of additives. It's like ordering hamburgers, Tony. Some get them plain, some with cheese, some ask for a deluxe hamburger, side dishes, and the whole works. <laughs> oh, I can understand that there are three different combinations, but when do you use what and why? Well, it all depends on the operating conditions of each particular engine, Tony. In other words, you try to match the oil characteristics to the driving conditions to get the best lubrication combination for the engine. So, if you don't already know, you should ask your customer which of three general types of driving conditions apply to him. What are those three types of service? Well, first, there's the condition when operating speeds and atmospheric temperatures are moderate. And the majority of trips are over 10 miles. Engines operate at normal temperatures most of the time. That's known as ML service. The second condition is a car driven at high speed for short periods or at moderate speeds on long trips during warm temperatures. It also applies to short trips alternated with long trips during moderately cold weather. Crankcase vapors are drawn off on those long trips. That kind of driving is known as MM service. The third classification is the service an engine gets under hot weather, high speed operation, such as a summer vacation trip, or frequent driving in hilly country. This driving is known as MS service. MS service also applies to cars that are used in stop and start driving, especially during very cold weather. I ought to keep those general types of driving conditions in mind, okay. But just where do those letters ML, MM, and MS come from? Well, those letters were just picked to indicate the type of service. Actually, the letters make the service easy to remember. The ML could stand for mostly light service. The MM might stand for mostly medium service. And the MS could mean mostly severe service. That's a good memory tip, Tech. Those ML, MM, MS letters, Tony, are American Petroleum Institute service classifications. You may have seen the abbreviation API on oil can labels. Yeah, yeah, I think I have. Well, in addition to the SAE number, the API service classifications will also be marked on the can to indicate the service that the oil is designed to handle. And if you see two service classifications, the letters MM and MS, that means the oil can be used in engines operating under the MM or MS conditions we talked about. You get it, Tony? You pick an oil first for temperature conditions using the SAE number and based on the recommendations in the owner's manual. Then you match driving conditions with the service letter designation on the can. That's how to pick the oil that'll give the owner the best service. Now, if somebody will turn the record over, we'll pick up some more good pointers on proper engine oil service. So far, Tony, we've told you when to use what oil. But to tell you why that's necessary, we'll have to go into the composition of oils. Okay by me, Mac. I'm still a little in the dark. Well, remember that an oil mark for service ML is usually a straight mineral oil with no additives. You know, Tony, during its early life, an engine can consume some oil until a certain amount of wearing in takes place. Yeah, oil consumption can be a little high until the piston rings seat themselves. Right. Now, that's very often due to the practice of using oil with additives. It does such a good job of reducing wear that occasionally the rings do not seat. So, if you get a case where oil consumption is high for a low mileage engine, drain the crankcase and fill it with oil for service ML. Then, after the rings have seated, 
You can recommend an oil based on the driving conditions under which the engine is operated. Oh, I see. In certain cases, for peak oil economy on a low mileage engine, recommend oil designed for service ML. Right. That's on those special cases where oil consumption is noticed before the first oil change is reached. Tell Tony what oil for service MM has got, Mac. Sure. Oil mark for service MM has either natural or added oxidation and corrosion inhibitors. Those additives tend to control and reduce oxidation of the oil at higher temperatures. Stopping oxidation reduces varnish deposits. Additives also reduce corrosion of vital parts. How do those additives cut down that corrosion? Why, the inhibitors form a protective coating over the metal parts, preventing corrosion. Also, by stopping oxidation, the inhibitors retard the formation of acids. Now, oil designed for service MS contains oxidation and corrosion inhibitors plus the addition of detergents. Detergents are materials which keep the engine interior clean. What do you mean, detergents? Well, detergents are chemicals which keep foreign particles in suspension so they don't settle and form deposits. That's how they keep the engine clean. Carrying those solid particles in suspension makes the oil look dirty. But unless it feels gritty, it still is suitable for service and shouldn't be changed. Those particles are soot and lead deposits that normally blow by the rings. Resins and other varnish-like materials from hot oil and partially burned gasoline are found in the crankcase. Detergents prevent the deposit of these solid particles. That's why an owner who does a lot of hard driving should use an oil for service MS. Most MS oils have additives that keep them from thinning out at high temperatures. That's right, Tech. And opinions differ on what hard driving really is. You've all heard that old line about used cars. This car was owned by a school teacher. She never drove it out of town and treated it like a baby. Huh. Yeah, Mac. I've sure heard that one pulled a lot of times. Well, brace yourself, my boy. What Mac just described is an example of hard driving. You mean that's hard driving? Yes, Tony. Tech's right. Stop and start driving, short trips, low engine temperatures. That's the hardest kind of driving on an engine. For one thing, the crankcase ventilation system can't draw off combustion gases when a car doesn't go fast enough or far enough to make the system operate. The oil collects acid and water and develops sludge. This is particularly true under cold weather conditions. That's a type of MS service then, huh? You bet your life that's an MS service, Tony. An engine under that type of operation needs all the additives and detergents it can get. Yes. And another kind of hard driving is when an engine is driven at sustained high speeds or under heavy loads. The engine oil becomes very hot. That excessive heat causes oxygen to combine with the oil and starts oxidation. Somewhere in between the moderate service and hard driving we've mentioned, is the operation you'd peg as service MM. That's when the engine temperature rarely goes higher than normal. In a case like that, there's a moderate oxidation of the oil and enough acid to corrode engine parts. So oil for service MM is designed to inhibit that oxidation and corrosion. I see. The API letters then are an improvement on SAE numbers. Oh no, Tony. The API service classifications in no way replace the SAE grade numbers. It's still necessary to use the right viscosity oil according to the temperature expected. Follow the recommendations in the owner's operating manual. Now, here's a temperature table for your guidance. For temperatures not lower than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, use SAE 30 oil. For temperatures as low as 10 degrees Fahrenheit, Use SAE 20W oil. When you expect temperature to go down as low as 10 degrees below zero, be sure to use SAE 10W. For temperatures lower than 10 below, use SAE 5W. Okay, Mac, will do. And don't forget, Tony, you got to base those recommendations on the lowest expected temperatures before the next oil change period. I see. I got a long range my weather forecasting. Right. 
By the way, we used to think that the lightest oil provided the best lubrication, but recently, heavier oils have been found to be more satisfactory, as long as they don't cause hard starting. Why the change, Mac? Well, a heavier oil thins out much less at high temperatures, so it provides a better oil cushion, which reduces bearing wear. That's important since higher speeds increase the load on bearings. So SAE 30 is recommended for use after the break-in period and for temperatures above 32 degrees. One oil you don't have to worry about, Tony, is the oil the factory installs in new engines. You tell them, Mac. Okay. That factory installed oil in engines not equipped with torque converters, Tony, is a highly refined oil having a viscosity of SAE-10W. It's designed for service ML. So keep that factory oil in new engines for the first 500 or 1,000 miles, depending on the make of car, before you change it. Engines equipped with torque converters get SAE-10W or 20W, depending on the season. This oil is designed for service MM, and should not be drained before the first seasonal change. Engines that are shipped to 20 below zero climates ought to have the oil drained and SAE 5W oil put in. Well, that certainly makes sense. When adding oil to factory installed oil, use SAE 10W in most cases. Oil for MS service can safely be used with oils for MM or ML service. Okay, Tech, I'll remember that. On cars equipped with torque converters, which get their oil supplied from the engine, change the oil only twice a year. The owner's operating manuals give the oil and filter change periods for all engines, so you better read those manuals carefully. Uh, speaking of filters, Mac, how's about wising Tony up on the filter change recommendations? Yeah, Tech. On our cars, Tony, change all oil filters at 5,000 miles, and always use the original equipment type of filter. That filter has a mighty important job to do. If you gamble on a questionable make of filter, the engine's apt to suffer. As a reminder, here's what the filter does. When the oil passes through the filter, solid matter and some of the moisture and acids in the oil are removed. Tests have shown that a filter provides top efficiency for about 5,000 miles. And if the car is driven hard, or over extremely dusty roads, the filter should be changed more frequently. Okay, I'll watch out for the hard drivers and the dusty road drivers. I sure appreciate all the information you and Tech are giving me. Well, don't mention it, Tony. This reference book will also add more points to those we covered. Look that book over, Tony. Every mechanic can use this important engine oil information. Proper lubrication is really vital to an engine. In fact, oil is engine life insurance. And it's our job to recommend the right oil for each of our customers. Oil designed for their own particular driving conditions.